Hi, I'm Rob from the Brush and Balcom, and today I'm going to be doing a short tutorial on how to paint the combat blades for the um, Nurgle Plague Marines that were in the Dark Imperium box set. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a layer of Vallejo Modeler Chrome, which is the metallic that I always use for the metals, like the silvery coloured metals. Very thin, it's got loads of pigments in it, and it just gives a really nice coat on it. There we go, we've got that layer on. Uh, just going to wait for that to dry and then we'll come back and we'll do the washes on it. Okay, that's nice and dry now. Um, because we're going to do this looking quite rusty and grimy, rather than just using the Vallejo Black Shade, I'm going to be using a mix of Vallejo Black Shade and Vallejo Umber Shade, which is a very dark brown. That should just give it a nice, a nice, uh, nice base to start doing all the, the nasty bits on. And I'll leave quite a bit around the top of the hilt there. I reckon that'll probably be part that doesn't get too clean too often. There we go. So we've got the, the base layer of shade on there. And we're going to leave that to dry and then we'll come back to that and add a bit more to it. Okay, now that the shade's dry, you can kind of see the, the, the blade itself is quite... It's got that great grimy look that you get with the just the black shade, but then you've got hints of the brown coming through as well, so it does look a bit a bit weathered in there. What we want to do is try and add a little bit more of the brown and sort of like I've got um gonna be using the, the umber shade again and then you're gonna be using a little bit of seraphim sepia just to really make it look as though there's there is little rust patches within the blade itself. So start with the umber shade, we'll get that one done, then we'll have to wait for that to dry, and then we'll start with the seraphim sepia. Now you can see that the brush I'm using is quite thick, it's got no point on it whatsoever. So it does sometimes make it a little bit difficult, but I'm not really trying to get very fine areas with it, just sort of like a general area, because you'll be using a thinner brush to pick out little areas to put the uh, the seraphim sepia on, and then finally a slightly orange shade on part of it as well. Because it hasn't got that big a point on it, that's got no point whatsoever. Have a look at that. That's going to be want to try and cram a bit of that umber shade down by the bottom there. So you can see that that's got a few nice little areas of brown on there. Gonna wait for that to dry and then we're gonna add another little layer on there. So with the umber shade now dry, uh, we're just gonna add a little bit of seraphim sepia shade, which is the citadel colour, um, and we're gonna get that and just put some of that into the uh, the darker recesses to add that a bit more of orangey colour, and then um, maybe a little bit outside of that as well. Now you can tell that I'm using a thinner brush for this because you need to get into the little the little gaps a bit. I'm gonna be doing in the slightly shallower gaps as well, just to give that a more orangey look. Okay, so we're going to leave that like that for now, and once that's dry, we're going to come back and do one more layer of shade, and then we're going to just put some silver highlights on that to bring the blade back up to a shine. Okay, so you can see the browns and that have dried now. Um, you've got the deeper recesses, and you've got the sort of like the lighter orangey colours around here, and that's actually looking pretty nice for me. That what I'm going to do now is just add a tiny little spot of um, Cassandra yellow shade from shade from Citadel. Um, I'm going to add that to some of these yellowy areas here where the seraphim sepia is dried. Now 
noticing you've got a little one of the little spine things there growing up the blade. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a umber shade to that as well, just darken that off to fit in with the rest of it. And back to the Cassandra yellow. The final part of the blade to do is just the edge highlights on the uh, the metallics here. So I'm just going to use a bit of uh, Vallejo Flames of War Gunmetal Grey. And it's quite a dark metallic, so it shouldn't be too imposing once you've put it on. I'm just going to add that to the very edge and go over some of the bits where you've got raised areas that would have um, you know, caught armour or what have you when he's been using the blade. There we go, and that is how I do the blades for the uh, the Death Guard. You've got this little bit here, which I'll be doing a sort of like a purpley colour, um, but I'll do another another tutorial on how to do the purples and some of the uh, the gloopy bits that are hanging outside of them. So that'll be for another tutorial. Hi, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It does help us out a lot. We put a new video up every Wednesday at six o'clock UK time. Um, hopefully, see you at the next one. Thanks a lot.